What's going on, everybody? And welcome back to another episode of the Good Vibes Podcast. You're with myself, Keenan Reed. And today we have a very special gifted athlete, Christian Izian, also known as Kraft, as we, as we call him. So what's good, bro? How you doing? Hey, what's going on, guys? I'm happy to be on the show, man. I've been begging Keenan Poke. I'm like, come on, I got to get on here, man. <laughs> so, yeah, I'm happy to be here. No doubt, bro. Everybody happy to hear from you. So let's talk about how did you get started playing football? Like, when you was a kid, how did that you know whole process get going? Yeah, so just I have an older brother, you know, so he was he was playing football, he was playing a bunch of sports, and I was always like a kid that was always outside, you know, doing something, you know, just being around. So my mom, she decided to throw me into sports right after my brother, and uh, it's just something I fell in love with since I was six years old, just mm. playing the sport, running around, you know, not letting people tackle me, you know what I'm saying? Like, that's just the whole idea of the sport for my, as a kid, so I was like, enjoying that, and as I got older, it just progressed, I got better, you know what I'm saying? I see more of my capabilities out of right. it. When did you know that you could actually play at this high of a level, though, and, and not just play here, but actually be a standout at this level? When did you know that moment for you? I mean, like, I just felt like the age of, like, maybe, like, 10 or 11, I'm like, I'm just, I felt better than everybody else. Like, I knew I was better than everybody else. So we used to have this thing at uh, you football. We used to have, like, an 18-point rule where you score more well, three touchdowns on somebody, you got to come out your best player. That's it. Yeah. yeah, so, like, I would wake up in the morning just knowing going to games, like, yeah, I'm about to score three touchdowns and I'm out playing in the first, second quarter, you know what I'm saying? And like that just became like a ritual for me. So like, just knowing like just being better than everybody else and seeing how I got to high school it was like it's kind of easy still too. So I'm like, so college, why not? You know what right. I'm saying? Yeah. You definitely stand out. We know you different. I mean, you believe that yourself. You feel me? So that's facts. You feel me? Looking at where you came from, Erasmus Hall, also E Hall, would you whatever you call it, you feel me? You guys are straight up a powerhouse. You breed top tier athletes. What is it like not only coming from there and being under a great coaching staff over there, a great culture, but what is it like also now having some of them guys over here at Rutgers and playing with them? Yeah, so yeah, transferring to Raz is my senior year. That was actually an interesting experience to me. Like, my mother wasn't sold on it. You know, my family wasn't too sold on it. You know, the whole academic environment, the school, you know, mm-hmm. it's in the middle of Brooklyn. It's kind of crazy. So uh, me having to convince her, like, I ain't going to lie, my God, I, I got to come here. Like, this is the best thing for me in my career. You know, so we visit the school, you know, ultimately we end up making that decision to go there and it just panned out to be the best decision I made in my life at that moment was just being around other kids like me, you know what I'm saying, going through the same things I go through every day, you right. know what I'm saying, other guys like AC, you know, not knowing about them, knowing about them but not knowing who they are, Sean Ryan, Kess, you know, other guys like that that's here. So being able to play with those dudes my last, my senior year, you know, form that connection with them, you know, be, you know, more known in the city because I was playing in Jersey the year before, that was a great like way to go off my senior season mm-hmm. in high school. No doubt. 2020 was special for you. 2020 was very special. It was a COVID year. I remember you, you what, like four takeaways and like five games or yeah, like yeah. you snapped, bro. But let's talk about where where how you ended it. That Nebraska game. Talk about literally go ahead tell everybody what you did that game. You found me and, and what did it mean for you? You know, just going into the game, knowing it was probably like our last game of the season, it was it was a weird feeling, like, you know, that whole season, just having no fans around, just, mm. like, the whole thing was crazy. I think that week we were supposed to play Nebraska at Nebraska. We ended up playing at home, so it was yeah, a crazy snowing thing. and stuff. Yeah, yeah, so, but just going into that game, I, like, we were banged up, you know what I'm saying? We had guys out. You got, I'm, I'm just playing, you know what I'm saying? I'm just I'm having fun. I was coming off a two-takeaway game prior before that, so I had two picks in the two games before that, so I just felt like, like takeaways was coming to me naturally, and, mm-hmm. Uh, so I ended up that game with, I think, two fumble recoveries and two interceptions. And then, you know, the one-hand interception, that was – that was I felt like I was really just having fun, you know, like as a high yeah. school kid again. Like it was just out there just, you know, having a good time. So that was probably one of my favorite experiences since I've been here. You talk about the one hand like it was regular. Like, <laughs> let me tell you, I saw that one-hand pick. I'm looking. I saw – is that real? Nah, that was unreal, bro. It actually made uh, Sports Center like top ten or something like that, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. First plan to tell you, yeah. Yeah, you're different, boy. Let's talk about off the field. What are some things that you enjoy doing? Um, I know you're a big gamer, too. You're on the side sometimes, you feel me? What are some things you like doing off the field? You know, I just, you know, I like relaxing. I'm a big relaxing guy. Like, I like, mm. I like of course, playing video games, listening to music. You know, I'm big on, like, I'm big on to, like, trading and stuff like that. I love trading, you know what I'm saying? Like, investing and stuff like that. Right. Just working on, like, see, I'm an IT major, so, you know, I'm always into the computers, learning what's the new advancements gotcha. and stuff like that. You know, I'm big on, like, focusing on stuff like that. And just while I'm not just stretching, exercising, you know, uh, meditating and stuff like that, just focusing on my inner self. So Take care of your body, your yes. mental, everything, no yes. doubt. You're always mad locked in when you come in here, too, so there's no doubt you're doing something else outside here that's helping you be the best you can be. Yeah. Talking about music, you feel me? Like, 
I know you put me on to some great artists out of some of my favorite now. Yeah. You feel me? <laughs> from Sean, even you know what I'm saying? All that. Those are some of my favorite. You feel me? What are some things that like? What are some? What's your taste in music? What are some artists that you like? Let everybody know what you like listening to. You know, I'm, I'm pretty have a pretty broad spectrum of music. Like, yeah. I go to locker room. I know I play anything from like you said, Shawnee Bell Lands. I play Luke Holmes. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, like, I yeah. play anything. I got a wide range of music. So, and that's the type of person I am. I like you know, like venturing in other people's like type of genres. You know, I'm not afraid to like tell people like, yeah, I listen to this. Like, of course I know these. Like, if people hear me listen to Luke Holmes. Like, how you you know this song? Of course I know, I know Luke. Like, I love. I, they say the same messages within the songs. It's oh, just no. they they rely a little differently. So it's like. All right, I like listening to different music, though, all types of music. Woman, yeah. man, all that shit, so yeah. I mean, you got good vibes with you. That's why I had to bring you up here, course, man. You feel me? I look at you as one of the best leaders that we have on this team. Without a doubt, the way that you care for not only yourself but your teammates, the way that you handle your business. As a leader, how do you come every day and set that standard? You know what I'm saying? How do you keep pushing every day, even the days you don't feel like it, to let the younger guys know, to let the team know? I got you. I'm gonna do my job, and I'm gonna show you guys the right way. Yeah, I mean, I come with that the mentality every day. It's like I know I gotta bring it because you know, like if not me, then who? You know, and, and just coming in as a 2018 freshman, like just being oblivious to like really what what college football is about, like what sports is about. I'm just coming to think I'm gonna play football, but it's so much more than that. Like you gotta put a mental aspect part to it. Like you gotta you gotta work out. You work out more than you play the games. You know what I'm saying? You lift more than you gonna play any games. You play 12 games. We work out. I mean, 300 days, you know what I'm saying? So it's like coming in with that mindset every day that's like you play, you work out for all these 12 opportunities that we have. So I come in the building every day like I got to put my best foot forward every day. People, you know, depending on me. And, and then I go home and I'm like, I get the humbling experience that, you know, it's people who look up to me. You know, my little brother's in high school. He went to the same high school I go to, that right. I, I went to. So just having that, people, people like coming to me like, I look up to you, bro, like keep going. That little motivation right there. Every time I go home, I visit other places where people know me. It's like, wow, these people actually know who I am and right, they look up right. to me. So that motivation right there, walking in the building every day, is enough for me. I mean, you got the billboard too. Yo, yeah, the billboard. That was uh, billboard. I think that's something big that should be. You know what I mean? How did yeah, that feel? That was amazing. Uh, me and O three uh, had that billboard. We I don't know where we thought we were going. I think we were going to uh, we said we were going to ESPN interview. They tricked us. ESPN interview. We ended up having a billboard right about what, ten minutes out from my uh, high school. So. To have my little brother see that driving by on the bus every morning to school and his friends seeing that. It's tough. That was huge, yep. Definitely. It's tough. Going off a little, because you brought some really interesting points up to me, um, listening to your response. What have you learned from Coach Ciano then? He's taught us a ton of qualities and, and leadership traits. What are some of the main things that you've learned from Coach Ciano? I've learned some, like, besides the stuff that he talks about every day, just the sayings that he gives us, the family trust chop stuff, like, I truly, like, believe that, and I live that. Like, I remember last year, me and uh, 03 were in Atlanta training, and, um, you know, stuff was happening. He was like, damn, don't, don't throw your helmet. You know what I'm saying? Me and 03, we just make, you know what I'm saying? We just making jokes. But it's yeah. like, that's real stuff, though. Like, people, like, live that culture every day, and we live that culture. Like, we see it happen every day. So just those little sayings in the back of your mind, you know, you're like, damn, something happens. Like, yeah, Coach Yana was right about this. You know what I'm saying? And it will have nothing to do with football. It will just be life. You know what I'm saying? So just taking his little sayings that he gives to us and team meetings and stuff like that and portraying it to your real life is is something I think I'll carry on, you know, tell my kids one day because it's real life skills that he helps us with. So now uh, diving even deeper, you talked about it brief a little bit earlier, but what advice would you give to a young boy that's coming up? You found me somebody that could be from e Hall, somebody that's your little brother, your, some of his friends, you found me, somebody just growing up through the struggles that you came through growing up. What is some advice that you would give them and to help them be at this level, at a college football level? Yeah. Uh, something I would tell, like, you know, a lot of younger athletes, of course, like, just coming in college or coming out of high school, just being undersized, especially, like, mm -hmm. just, like, know your craft, work on your craft. Like, you can't change the fact that if you 5'10", five, 5'9", five, whatever the case is, you're 156 pounds, whatever, whatever. You got to be able to home on your, like, your talents, your crafts mm -hmm. and work on that. You know what I'm saying? You can't control what you can't control. You know what I'm saying? So... Like, just really focus on what you do best and really get really good at that. And then your weaknesses help, help that ele elevate that up a little bit. You know what I'm saying? It's not going to be easy for everybody. It wasn't easy for me. I didn't get this Rutgers off in my senior year until, I want to say, around November. You know what I'm saying? So I was, I was one of the late. late yeah. yeah, exactly. I was a late recruit. I was a late commit. You know what I'm saying? I was probably the last in the class to commit. So I came. people came into college already down like, hey, is he, is he good enough? And I just pulled all that stuff aside, you know, just took the underdog mentality. And I still do to this day. Like, I still feel like, you know, 
underseen in the, in, the, in the football world. So it's like I just come with that mindset every day. Like it's still people that don't know you out there. You know what I'm saying? So no why not? Why not go hard? No doubt. What are some future life goals that you have? Um, because you're not only do you have an, <laughs> like an excellent college career right now, but you also are about to get you have a degree. What are you getting ready to do? You feel me? With your future goals, what do you see Christian Izzy doing in the future? You know, I'm just, I'm just big on community. You know, I'm I, I'm really big on entrepreneurship. Like I, I wanna I wanna help. This has been something I've been thinking about since high school, middle school. Like mm-hmm. coming from where I live, where I used to live, where I live now, in Far Rockaway, New York, is like we're limited to re- a lot of resources. Like we got the beach, but we don't have. I feel like enough resources to where we have to get something. We have to travel 30 minutes, 40 minutes out the way, cross a toll, okay. you know, stuff like that, just to get stuff. that I feel like that should be, you know, right there at your right. own dispense. You know what I'm saying? So. It's definitely after like playing ball, even during playing ball, I want to be like an entrepreneur, I mean, open businesses, you know, being co- community development where I can, you know, help the people that you know, help me grow when I grew up at. So I think right. that's big. Definitely. Going on a lighter note, you feel me? I want to ask you, who do you think the funniest guy on the team is and why? <laughs> that's a big, that, that, that means a lot. There's a lot of them too. So. Oh my God, there's a lot of comedians on this team. I got to throw myself in there. I'm, I, I feel like no I'm doubt. funny, but no like, now nah, we got some comedians. Uh, let me think. Who is really funny? I give Dez. Dez is hilarious to me. Dez, like, oh my god, Dez yeah. Mig, you know, he's like, he's hilarious, you know, like in his own way, because you know he's himself. He's a funny so dude. He's not trying to be funny. He's not trying to be funny. He's his own dude. I think this is a unanimous answer, but who do you think the best dancer on the team is? I, we gotta give it to Kyle, right? Kyle Nunga. Gotta give it to Kyle. Kyle Nunga, he's a beast, like, and they put the jersey club on, and I recorded them so many times that we went viral on TikTok together. Mm-hmm. Like, bro, he is he's legit. Like, he's very best dancer yeah. for sure. So what about, you know, y'all, y'all New York, y'all be getting light, what's it called, getting light or something? We get sturdy, we get sturdy. Get sturdy, sure. I get sturdy. Sure. Who the best at that then? It got to be AC. AC, I'm not going to lie. AC, yes. AC, AC is insane. AC I'm not going to lie. Like, AC, be, he, he been practicing new moves. I walk in AC room, he practicing new moves. I'm like, yo, AC do moves that I've never seen before. So him and Kess is a toss-up, but yeah. I got I to give it to AC. Okay, okay. Hey, Kess. Yes, step Kess, a little bit then. Right, you heard step it up a little bit, but like AC different, you know what I'm saying? Okay, okay. So, what's your favorite movie? Mm. Favorite movie? Up to late, I'm not, I'm big on like suspense movies. So, uh, I would probably say, I'm not sure if you heard of the movie called Long by a Citizen. That's probably my okay. favorite movie. That's Jamie Foxx is in there. He starred in that movie, and just about a guy. His wife, you know, gets murdered and, you know, a crazy murder. He's he's working the, the judicial system, showing how broken it is by escaping and re-putting himself back in jail, you know, just really showing how the system is unfair and stuff like that. And I just, I love the concept of the movie, but, you know, ultimately he ends up dying. But, yeah, right. I, I like the great, it's a great movie. What about a TV show then? Mm. I can give you a few of those. I'm big on like cartoon. I love cartoon. I, I'm a big Naruto fan. Like I don't know if everybody know that. I love Naruto. You know that I feel like that that little cartoon right there teaches the most life lessons of any show I watch. That probably that the Boondocks. I throw the Boondocks, the boondocks in there. Oh my god! You know like stuff like that. Like Martin. I love yeah. Martin. <laughs> I love Martin. And and my and I got like all time favorite number one. Everybody is Chris. I feel like that's the best show. The best family oriented show where it teaches real life lessons. So definitely number one for that. But I want to hear who you think the fastest and why. So I hear we have this kid in here now, a freshman who just came out of high school running a 10-3. Mm-hmm. I'm going to put him aside. I'm going to put him aside. For now. I'm going to put him aside for now. I haven't seen him run. No, no, no caterpillar on him. I'll put him aside for now. With him aside, I'm going to say me. I, I, I know it's me. I've never lost the race. I don't want I don't want to say the people I beat. <laughs> <laughs> I'll just say that they was on this podcast. <laughs> They were on this podcast but previous to me, so I'm gonna keep that <laughs> internal. But I've never lost the race since I've been in this building, and and I'm just stick behind. I'm gonna stick beside that. People are not gonna tell you that because people don't know. They take me for the big strong guy, you know. Check the numbers. Check the catapult numbers and check. It's me. I'm going. He, he wants to be nice. I'm going there with some blazers. Oh yes, some blazers that we got. I'll give you some blazers. We got Max Melton blazer, hundred percent. Robert Longerbeam, Blazer. Are you going in order? No, no order. Fingers no, order. Oh, no, order. Okay. no order. No order. No order. Might be order. <laughs> <laughs> Shorty, Al Shadid, Blazer. Of course, Aaron Krushank, Blazer. Definitely. No order, though. Blazers. 
Top five. That's my top five, and of course, myself included, Blazers. But you think you're the fastest? I would have to give myself the edge right now, of course, with, you know what I'm saying, with AC, we're coming back from his, you know, recovering. I got to give myself the edge. All right. I mean, yeah, y'all heard it from him. I ain't going to give y'all my answer, because right? I, I think I know, but I ain't, and if you, it's not if my, you, I ain't if doing If you put it. us all on the line, we could do that too. Like, it's whatever y'all really want to do. You know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm all for it. I know a lot of guys want to see this race, but 40 yards, I'm, I don't just, I don't see anybody losing. I don't, I don't see anybody beating me. I just can't see myself losing anybody. So, that's just me. All right, Craft, I appreciate you for coming out, speaking to us. We definitely had a good vibe in here. Y'all make sure y'all stay tuned for the next episode of the Good Vibes Podcast. This is with myself, Keena Reed. Take care.